Look at the muscles on you. What a fine figure of a man and what a fine time to be playing Crusader Kings 3 Northern Lords. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the first playthrough of... Uh, well, it's Crusader Kings 3 Northern Lords. I just said that. With our good friend who we designed in the uh, feature video that I put up yesterday, Jerry Coninger. We'll go over his, uh, his stats and traits and everything else. And a little bit of his backstory, too, for those of you who didn't watch that video. And we have a very distinct goal this series. And that goal is King of All the Isles. A new, very hard achievement added in Northern Lords. And the prerequisite for that is, as a North Germanic Asatru, control all the islands in the Atlantic and the Mediterranean while keeping your realm size below a certain threshold. Everything you see highlighted on your screen is somewhere we will need to grab, be it Malta or Cyprus or Menorca or these random places up in the Baltic, uh, Orland and Gotland and everywhere else. But of course, the key one of that and where we're starting today is Iceland. And along that path, I'm hoping we can crack out a few of the other achievements as well because there are some other goals that we could almost certainly fulfill while we are on our way. And bear in mind, when we get that achievement, when we get the island achievement, we can go from there as much as we like. That 80 realm size limit only applies until we've collected all of those. After that, we can blob freely and to our heart's content. I'm not going to say we're going to make a conscious effort to go for these, but if we just happen to stumble along them with all of our raiding and adventuring, then honestly, why not? So there's Faster Than the Fox, which is starting and staying as a North Germanic Asatron of any kind. Control the Kingdom of Sicily before 1047. Gives us a good, like, 200 years to crack that out. So that one's, that one's a fairly simple one. On our way through, we'll probably grab that anyway. Canute the Greater, as an unreformed tribal, take the secure the High Kingdom of the North Sea decision. So completely control du jour, England, Norway, and Denmark, and form that into an empire. And on the subject of that, the achievement for Mikla Gadariki is starting and staying as a North Germanic Asatron of any kind, completely control the Kingdom of Thessalonica, and hold any empire without holding the Byzantine Empire itself. So we could make that North Sea Empire, and then we could just conquer through Thessalonica, and tick off two in one fell swoop. And there's a few other ones as well, like female rulers becoming uh, witches, um, specifically Norse Asatruan rulers. Um, potentially also Russia, so we could flip over to Islamic right at the end. There's have your capital on an island in the Indian Ocean, so if we really want to keep going with our island hopping, there is potential there. More importantly, above all achievements and above everything else that we're setting ourselves out to do here, the ultimate goal is to have fun and to make an incredible story for the return of Jerry Coninger, who may or may not be related, of course, to our Crusader Kings 2 character. So we are starting with both Brave and Wrathful, both virtuous to as the true rulers. We have Brilliant Strategist. We have Open Terrain Expert. That obviously is uh, given to us randomly there. Advantage in Plains, Farmlands, and Steps plus 4. Not massively useful, though. If we go raiding around Europe, it will come in fairly handy there. And then Aspiring Blade Master as well. In terms of stats, we have slightly higher marshal than what we had yesterday. I swapped over from the uh, from the kind of private CK2, CK3 build over to the public one. So I had to make a new character and basically inject him here. So 28 marshal instead of the 26 I think we had yesterday, but we're also a lot younger. Younger rulers gain more points because they're younger and less experienced. And more importantly, of course, you gain that uh, kind of negative opinion with vassals and things. Luckily, I'm going to worry about that because we're in the middle of... Uh, I mean, we're in the middle of Iceland. There's barely anyone here. Now, the only restriction I'm going to put on this playthrough is with our Dynasty Legacy. I want to only focus on the Adventure and Pillage Legacies because they're new. They're shiny. And obviously, I feel like it will uh, not only tie into this particular playthrough really well, but it's a nice way to showcase it too, isn't it? It might make it a lot harder for us because of course, we don't have access to some of the nice mechanics that come with some of the other ones. But these... Given that we're trying to go far and wide, will be very, very helpful. I'm thinking early on we might just go all in pillage and just take everything not nailed down. And then, of course, because we are starting younger, our son is also younger as well. Budvar. Can I not rename him? Ah, uh, no, he's too old. Shit. Already too. Well, that's a terrible name. We'll have to come up with a nickname for him instead. <laughs> Got a glimpse then of Jerry's. <laughs> Looks like someone put a hat on a thumb. First things first. Let's get... Lovely Jerry set up with his martial lifestyle. Now, to be honest, I'm thinking strategists will come in very, very handy, especially the movement strategist perks, just so that we can actually get in there, raid, and get away before we get absolutely smashed by just about every other army in the world. Apparently, we're starting in, you know, one of the uh, one of the poorest nations actually possible to start in in Crusader Kings at this point. So we are going to go strategy focus. Bell and Justum is a bit pointless, but everything after that is so, so good. We could always go with like Gallant and go for. Uh, 
Knight effectiveness. Ooh, that could be pretty good. King's Guard as well. Friendly Fatal Casualties minus 20% and plus 5 advantage just so we can get away. See, the thing is, everything down here, though, is absolutely pointless for us because we're not going to be marrying for alliances or claims or anything early on. There's, there's no need for that. So I think I will go strategist just based purely on that. Well, I may have just realized that Exclave Independence was set to total, which for a multiple nation achievement run is probably a terrible idea in hindsight. And you can turn that on and off without affecting achievement. So I'll turn it off for this one. Otherwise, we can't grab Sicily and Thessalonica. Otherwise, there'll be separate rounds and that'll be a bit of a mess. So I've taken this opportunity to redesign Jerry because, of course, you have to start a fresh save if you do something like that. So what I've decided is that Jerry is a man of action, but he is not a man of words or brain or anything else, really. So I've dropped all his other stats to zero. <laughs> <laughs> I've dropped all his other stats to zero and put it all in martial and prowess and very very luckily He also randomly got organizer this time rather than the previous one 25% bonus movement speed and minus 20% in retreat losses That's like one of the best raid traits you can possibly get So we really did luck out on this one now the first thing we're gonna go out and do is raid Absolutely everywhere and try and make a fortune and then we'll let's, I think try and unify Iceland under the banner of Jerry. Turn that into the uh, the duchy of, of Iceland and kind of elevate us that tiny little bit that we actually can. So I've sunk all of our prestige immediately into these guys here, the Bondi. Those are essentially real cheap raiding troops, right? They, they get bonus in farmlands, bonus in plains, but they're terrible in hills, mountains, and desert mountains. We're not going to be raiding into mountains realistically. Worse, of course, than the Huskals and the branching veterans, but they're also a third of the price. So I think that's a pretty safe bet. Look at this man. He's so massive. The delegation from Skalaholt slowly files out my private chambers. A long meeting finally over. The petitioners beg for money to repair the crumbling walls of the hold. No, I would rather not. Fort level minus one, popular pretty minus 10, but we gained 50 gold. Yeah. Yeah, no, I think I'm all right with that. Poor little Snorri. All right, it's called Snorri now because he's technically a different kid. Oh my God, he's dying. Bad humans plague Snorri, and the severity of his affliction is yet to be determined. But he's rowdy, so if he survives it, he might make for a good heir. Frodi would make for an... Yes, he would. Wow, look at this guy. Winter Soldier, Berserker, and Skill Tactician. Let's take a look at our commanders, because I imagine they're probably not terrible, just because of all the various different bonuses we're getting from Marshall, you know, like through our deities and whatnot. Uh, yeah, you'll do. Holy crap. Your silver tongue is shining today. Ah, Chancellor Fro Oh, God, is everyone called fucking Frodi? 1,219 troops. Let's uh, actually raise them all as raiders this time, genius. There we go. Let's get out there and let's bring... Look at Jerry's helmet. <laughs> it looks like a fucking walrus. <laughs> let's get out there and let's do some serious damage. Scotland, your first... Um, actually, no, you know what? Let's not go to Scotland. It's this silly place. North France. They're rich and easy to retreat from when we eventually get caught. Let's see what they've got in store for lovely Jerry the Walrus. Oh my god. <laughs> I love that you can just see his many chins poking out from the bottom there. It looks like a slowed. The peasants in the chiefdom of Vestraland are in a good mood. The harvest is bountiful. The roads are safe. Yes, they are. It's because of that wall I didn't build, you see. I graciously accept their gifts. Or we can send someone else in to uh, get their gifts. Yeah. Jerry is a greedy man. You lost a straight obese. I'll be honest, I'm going to disagree with you on that one, Chief. <laughs> Before I forget, we should probably marry someone, shouldn't we? Uh, there was somebody with Sif. She'll do. It's fine. We'll get plenty of concubines, I'm sure, along the way here that we can, um, you know, take on board. Settlement of Boulogne. An important stronghold in Greater Boulogne has fallen to my raiders. We've run the vast tracts of land and many equivalent subjects and shining treasures of Count Hilf to choose from. The troops stand ready, await my command to give them direction. Capture skilled slaves for Reykjavik. That will give them a bunch of terrible things, but we gained 40 development progress. Wow. Bring me bounteous plunder, giving prestige and gold. I think I've got to go for that. Oh, we've taken enough already. Oh, that's terrible. Bring me bounteous plunder, of course. Look at him. Regular man looks like tiny babby man by comparison. As my troops and I prepare to set the lands of Bruges, our first scouts report back. It seems the local towns are rich, but many are heavily fortified, and we could well be caught on our out by vengeful armies before we can break into the juiciest targets. All is not lost. The art of good raiding is an all-exploiting opportunity, and we could perhaps arrange a trade and tribute in exchange for staying our blades. Perhaps the local duke will be amenable. Well, because we're wrathful, we, it puts us in a bad position, really, doesn't it? Adds 10 loot to the current raiding army. A truce with the ruling king could be invaluable. We get a truce with Charles the Bold just because we don't raid him. Wow. We lose 75 prestige for that and 35 stress because we are wrathful. 
Yes, we probably could make money trading. Pillager anyway. You continue raiding Bruges. You lose 35 stress because you're awful. Or what kind of lily-livered feudal coward makes money without trading? You pillage Bruges and refuse to think about trading instead of raiding for the rest of your life. <laughs> Perfect. That was such an impressive raid. Our wife all the way back in Iceland that we haven't seen ever got pregnant. Wait a minute. That doesn't seem right. 108 gold. We're completely full. Oh. Well, we've got an heir. It's okay. We don't have to panic about that quite yet. Look at that. 108 gold, 108 prestige. We're to 300 gold already. I think we'll immediately invest this money into war camps in Reykjavik to give us that extra night, extra effectiveness, extra damage. Bruges is never going to know what hit them. Now, our neighbor is not looking so healthy, is he? He's really not looking so good. Uh, let's drop our armies and let's have a chat with my good friend Garda. Is that all he's got? Sincerely. Well, this could be, uh... This could be a very easy conquest. Don't mind if I do, my friend. Don't mind if I do. Well, they just kind of stood there and... Oh! But we got one-eyed. Which is virtuous because Odin had his eyes chopped out raiding Iceland. No, that's not how that works. We too traded our eye for knowledge. And that knowledge is... Be more fucking careful next time, Jerry, you idiot. And, oh, we're not done. Wow, got me shocked. I thought that would, uh, thought that would probably do it just by that one. Oh, a daughter, a daughter. Wife, what is wrong with this son? Thirida. Thirida, thir yeah, I think that's about right. Jerry's daughter. Hello. Uh, that's not a very good name though, is it? We're going to train you in diplomacy so you'll make for some good marriage fodder. Or you can make shield maidens in this. Why not? Honestly, why not? But we can't have a name like that. You are going to be called... Ferry. Ferry King. As in, you will ferry riches back to your king. Yep, that'll probably do it. Thank you. Okay, another step towards Iceland. We are over our domain limit of uh, two. Not very impressive. To be fair, we also don't have a steward. Let's see if Halstein can help us hold Husevik. Uh, how are we looking now? No, we're still, we're still screwed. Oh, a champion though. What a guy. Well, let's increase control back in Reykjavik after we... Kind of did take all that gold from those peasants. Wrathful. Jerry is a wrathful man. He's a real, he's a real piece of work. <laughs> My God, I'm surprised he can see anything. So we've got Parthian tactics, organized march, or engineered for destruction. I think we have to go organized march, right? So we can get our troops over there quickly, and we can get out of there quickly if needs be. Oh, and we can already raise a rune stone as well. It's customary among the Norse to erect carved monuments to commemorate important events: the death of a loved one, the settling of a dispute, the acquisition of land, and so on. Perhaps I could benefit from such a rock. I. I think you're oversimplifying it. Okay, let's do it then. But what to carve? It's only 50 gold, and my god, we have a lot of gold. Every runestone tells a message of some significant event in life of the commissioner. From the smallest peasant to the chieftain like myself, the stone records all. Should it speak for our vanquished foe, Chieftain Garda? This could be the big stepping stone, no pun intended, to the formation of Iceland, so that could be pretty big. Or we say no. Uh, you know what? That's fine. Perhaps my vanquished foe, Chieftain Garda. Tell a story. Really, really embarrassed the guy. Now I've decided what to put on my runestone, the question remains where to put it. My royals to victory, such as my triumph over Chieftain Garda, a constant reminder of war's glorious end. The best place to areas that require encouragement to cooperate. Of course, one or two spots do spring to mind. I think we will put it in Vestraland, because we, we... As it's our capital, we stand the most likely to... Uh, Potentially upset the peasants there. And we already have done that as... I mean, that's fairly evident given that there's like 50 control right now. So I think we'll go for... Vest Vestraland is uh, Reykjavik, right? Yeah, I was, I was pretty confident in that. I think Jerry would love a good hunt. He gets to kill something and he gets to eat it too. And I get the feeling this man likes to... Oh my god, it's, it's anti-Jerry. Look at this man. Brother? As we ride deep into the chieftain of Norland, the ground suddenly gets wetter and the air grows heavier. Suddenly, from out of the greenery surrounding us, a giant man appears, hulking in layer upon layer of dirty clothing. Explain yourself, he shouts. What are you doing in my swamp? Sorry, marshland. Your marshland, is it? Then show us around. Getting a local guide for 10 years and 500 stewardship experience. We can also try and talk him through, or we can straight up fucking murder him. No, I don't think I will murder him. Let's go for that one. There's no reason not to. He's one of our people. And ultimately, what's the point of going raiding if we're not doing it for the glory of our people? And 150 prestige to make up for these very, very expensive troops that got us into a little bit of debt there. I know the Marshall perk. Cool. Uh, hit and run. We've got to go for it. It works so well with raiding. Oh, and look at that. We can already create the Duchy of Iceland. 
Hey! Jarl. Jarl Yeti of Eastland. That's a fantastic start. Glory is widely known. Jerry, what a what a fantastic way ahead that we're we're paving, eh? Uh, I think we'll celebrate by how about how about raiding. I'm sure Paris has a lot of gold this time of year. We got absolutely clapped by one army and then immediately retreated into another army, which proceeded to absolutely clap us. We did beat them the first time, but obviously there's only so much you can do. You're probably thinking, well, that was a massive waste of time. Oh my friends, did we catch quite a tasty treasure? Queen Ermintrude of West Francia. <laughs> uh, madam, perhaps in exchange for your freedom, I'm thinking lovely Charles the Bold will give us 68 gold. Cannot afford the full ransom yet, or she can stay there for all I fucking care. What about Ellen Hard Wealth? 100. That actually ended up being massively profitable then, eh? Goodmunder. Hello. Boring old nobody Goodmunder. Brilliant. I won't lie to you. I'm already struggling for names. I'm going to call you... Uh, <laughs> how about Cassowary? Cassowary King. I could always have a Blute because oh, obviously I want to ransom her out, but she would not. Uh, the, the ransom of her just simply won't be accepted. So there's no point having her in our prison. We might as well get something out of her. In this case, the thing we get out of her is blood. So much blood. Those smaller blutes are held for many occasions throughout the year. Once a decade, the Asatruans of the of Eastland come together for a great celebration, and most importantly, a grand sacrifice. Through plentiful blood, though plentiful blood is shed for the gods, the meat of the offering goes to the faithful. Such a rich feast usually makes for an incredible party. Of course, such an affair is expensive, and certainly not all Asatruans will be invited. Perhaps just the people of Vestraland or all the freemen of my domain shall come. Of course, 75 gold. We might as well spend it on something useful, right? A blute can be both a grand and small affair. By tradition, they also include both human and animal sacrifice. Seven or Several prisoners will be offered up to the gods. Yeah, I think we'll do that. Tradition matters. The gods shall taste human blood. We gain a hundred piety for that. Subjects that do not endorse human sacrifice will lose ample opinion. That does tend to be the case, yes. <laughs> so now we can go to our prison. We can select Gida and we can say designate sacrifice. Gain soon to be sacrificed. She loses 50 opinion of us, which is actually fairly reasonable, given that we are... um. Killing her dead. Only minus 19 opinion, you say. Temple is filled past bursting with happy cheering Asatruans all roaring as Gida is dragged up to the altar, the first of several prisoners and more beasts. She thrashes ferociously as the Godar throttles her life away. Oh, that's nice. Human corpses to the hanging tree, animals to the cooking fires. All gore is collected in a bowl and Godar uses it to paint the walls of the temple inside and out. Truly, a spectacle worthy of the gods. Unless you're Gida, at which point you're probably pretty pissed, I would imagine. To Odin, to Freya, to Njorda, or time to rub shoulders with the common muck. We gain, so either Urn and, uh, whoever the hell that is. Who are you? My well, half goatee. Oh, our priest, right. Uh, gains 50 opinion of us, or, and we also gain 100, uh, piety too. Every Astro True character gains 30 opinion of you for five years, and every Astro True character gains went to Grand Sacrifice. Popular opinion plus 30. Or we can rub shoulders with the common muck. Um, what's the difference there? So the only difference is we lose, went to a grand sacrifice, and gain went to the people's grand sacrifice. Which trades 30 opinion for 50 opinion. You know? Let's do it. Jerry might be wrathful, but he is he's a man of the gods, I think. Hmm. <laughs> Real big dick energy. No, 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 no. Let's 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 just ransom her out. How much it's only 64. How much money are you making per month? Minus five for one. You know what? Actually I'll take the 64 in hindsight. Oh fucking Marshall died. Well, I suppose Valdemar is quite literally better than nothing. He's also a Varangian. Sure, okay. Living off the land gives 25% raid speed. So I went down through Engineer de for Destruction into that one. 200% supply capacity too. We're fully reinforced and we've got more troops than ever at this point. So let's go... What do you think? Back out raiding somewhere in France? Oh, son of a bitch. Really? <laughs> I disembarked troops right on top of them. You can't do that. Okay, fine. Whatever. We'll go somewhere else. Snorri got brave. Oh, wow. How's he coming out? Diligent, brave, and rowdy. Wow, this kid could be very, very good. Sonori does keep the trait brave. How's our daughter coming along? Curious isn't ideal. And I guess Cassowary will, uh... Throw you at anyone willing to educate you, I guess. Who have we got here? Is that Marshall? Valdemar. Do what you can with him. Hey, there we go. Nice. Bounteous plunder again, please. I need to fix my extremely... bruised ego. Oh my god, look at all the places that have been raided. <laughs> Okay, this is going to make our life quite tricky then. 
Uh, let's just grab what we can and play it a little bit safer. Not too bad. 60 gold plus another 100 from two of the radiaments that we had again. Apparently, we also picked up a load of prisoners that time too. Five of them. Oh, wow. Petty queen. That's what I like to see. Get them all gone then. 316 up to 173. Wow, we're making a fortune here. So if we upgrade the war camp, we can get two knights and they get the 10% effectiveness as well. Oh, we also get a little bit to our levy size. So I'm absolutely going to go for that first. Let's take a look at what else we can build because we've got a lot of cash. We've got a lot of prestige now too, which is the thing holding us back. I think the war camp is just everywhere. I mean, honestly, why the hell not? Another daughter. Well, hey, look, it's plenty of shield maiden, so I really can't complain. Three commanders is all I'm saying. Uh, how about... Oh, no. How about dis... Dysentery? <laughs> is that you spell dysentery? No, it's with an E, isn't it? Brilliant. So we can either give Snorri, our heir, stubborn, or vengeful for 30 stress, or chased. Oh, God. No. Gain vengeful, Snorri. There he is. Virtuous Drassatruin, Virtuous Drassatruin, and he's got Diligent as well. I think this guy might end up being good. He's following quite heavily in Jerry's footsteps, although he doesn't really look like Jerry. In fact, none of these kids really look like Jerry. She's got the kind of weird fish face going on. You know what I mean by that. We could actually take another band of these guys too, because we've got 0.6 prestige per month. One more band will take us down 0.2, right? 0.3. Wow, I guess it's rounding there. Fine. This is pretty fantastic. We're getting a lot of fucking troops. My wife, a trophy, or fetch a fine price. Man, he has really trimmed up, hasn't he? He's kind of gone from being just a kind of, you know, a, a big fell beast himself into a fine figure of a man. There it is. We can unify Iceland. Hey, good shit. 618. Wow, that's a surprise. Well, let's give it a little while for our troops to, uh, troops to reinforce that. I might even get our marshal maybe getting some control back. Oh, you know what? It's not nearly as bad as I thought. We will recruit whatever champions we can get at this point, to be honest, because they're all pretty terrible. That was after sending out a missive as well to try and invite some more champions. Not too bad. 2018, 16, then it kind of falls off pretty sharply. And there we go. Fully reinforced. 1,541. This guy should be now just kind of inferior, right? Yes. So we'll take that. Unify Iceland. Ideally, I don't want to give anything away. Bear in mind, when we become... Well, next generation, it will just split between... Us and our children anyway, with our main heir obviously gaining the actual duchy there and the, the other sons gaining the land. That I think is fine. The only downside to that, they might take a, a place that we want. I don't think they can ever take Reykjavik, but we might say want to invest more into Skalaholt and keep that one within the dynasty or within our player. Envelopment 2, giving us 25% mana arms counter efficiency. Kill them all, Jerry. Kill them all. 18%. Oh, that's very disappointing. I didn't say kill for you, did I? Oh, they're coming back. It's okay. They must have heard me. <laughs> Oh, incredible tactics here. I can't even be mad. This is fantastic. Story came of age. Oh, God. This doesn't sound good. For the longest time, I was hoping the good tutelage would be enough to teach Snorri the intricacies of warfare, but I was naive. He has only developed a basic understanding. Oh, he's only a tough soldier. I mean, he's not bad. Don't get me wrong. Tough soldier and logistician. 17 Marshall is still pretty fantastic. You've got to admit. Compared to Jerry, though, it's a, it's a shadow. Look at his fucking wife just there in the background. <laughs> we can marry off Snorri, and as we're a Jute now, we might get some better options. Theory has... You know, we could just take her as a concubine, right? Oh, unless she's um, unless she's a noble woman? No. I wonder if we could get her to court and then take her as a concubine. Yeah. Okay, let's try that. Let's go... Um, Let's just go straight up seduce on her. Sorry, we're trying to find wives for my son here, and he's just ended up seducing one of them. Uh, we're looking for somebody maybe a little bit younger than that, because she is 30. Um, oh. Well, she can go on the shortlist as well. I don't think alliances are particularly useful right now. Thought is Heldan's daughter. Oh, Heldan Whiteshirt's daughter. For the Aldum of Jorvik. That's something. Norse Jorvik. What the hell? What the hell's Norse Jorvik and regular... Oh. Well, there's Jorvik and there's Norse Jorvik. Did the hell done die? Split his realm. No, he's still alive. What the hell happened there? Yeah, anybody good and also an alliance. Chiefdom of the Faroe Islands. So we might want to conquer there, but she does at least have hail, which is something. That's a step in the right direction. Bear in mind, because we're only going for those two dynasty legacies that have been introduced with the Northern Lords, we're going to find it a lot harder to keep genetics in the dynasty, right? So... I think anything at this point is fine. 
Doesn't really matter who we marry, ultimately. It's, we're not getting anything out of it anyway. Boy, they really just want to... They really just want to throw themselves away, don't they? It's technically stalling the siege. But I don't really know for what reason. Well, thank you. And look at that. To the brash Yarl Jerry. May your years be short and miserable. Oh, my friend. His years have been well lived. Eastland. We can raise another runestone. We've got the money for it. And money is so, so, so easy to get right now. So I'm absolutely fine with that. Perhaps my vanquished foe. We did vanquish him. Yeah, that's a good idea. Oh, did he actually die? Oh, no. He's just gone into exile somewhere. Absolutely. Another runestone to him. Really, really an insult to injury there. <laughs> We've got one over in uh, Vestralam, right? Over in Reykjavik. So I think putting one on the other end of the country is a pretty good idea. For no other reason than, you know, everybody everywhere can on average get some good knowledge about Jerry then. Uh, let's go for... I think more bloody names. This is a horrible naming scheme. Oh, we're going to be out of rhymes this generation. Oh, I've got a good one. If he goes off and becomes a Varangian, he's a mercenary. Have I spelled that right? Uh, no, it's that way. There we are. Mercenary King. <laughs> that one's that one's pretty good, you gotta admit. Personal goal now to make sure this kid goes off to the Varangian Guard. Oh, we're having a thing. Or a ting meet. Or a necessary chore for any decent yarl. With all the free men in the area turning up to discuss local affairs, market, and jostle for privilege or that. For this privilege or that. As to be expected with such large gatherings, they have a way of turning heated, and this thing is no exception. I struggle to follow the details through all the yelling, but it seems though men from Australand are squabbling over a village on the border with Norderland, both groups claiming to own the land. The people of Australand are in the right, which will make the people of Australand happy and the people of Norderland pissed off, or the people of Norderland, which get this, make the people of Norderland happy and Australand pissed off. Our good Australand men going to take this from Norderland. We can make them fight one another. <laughs> uh, what does that actually do for us if it will actually pop up there? Uh, level reinforcement minus 25, but the, the, so the people are happy, but they are killing one another. Or, they'll tie themselves out eventually. Lose 40 stress. Yeah, I think we'll just leave them to it. I don't think it's any of... I don't think Jerry cares, let's be honest, with his stats. Oh! As y'all, I've been obligated to attend a local wrestling tournament, but the contestants have been delayed. The tournament won't start for at least another hour. Looking around, I notice my son and heir, Sonori, sitting under a nearby pavilion. Clearly bored halfway to death. On the other hand, I notice a merchant dropping off a cart of spice wines. Spend some time with Snorri under the pavilion. He becomes our friend. And hopefully we can teach him something a little bit better, seeing as he's going to take over this round. So one thing I'm going to do during this series, uh, something that I've never really done before, is, is kind of do a recap of everything that we've got going on here to kind of really underline, firstly, what we achieved, if anything, and secondly, where we stand ready to go into tomorrow. Jerry is now Jarl, of course. Lost an eye in the process, but that only made him more powerful. We've got three virtues. I think the only other virtue now is, uh, well, it's Ventral, and then it's also Poet, too. So in theory, you could get all three, or five, sorry, virtues, which would be just insane. We've already got plus 30 with all of our people there. Iceland is ours. We made a shitload of gold and a shitload of prestige, which is kind of a surprise, seeing as we did spend a lot of that on our units. As for our five children, we have Snorri. Snorri Jerryson. He is a diligent, brave, vengeful, tough soldier. 17 Marshall. Didn't come out as good as I was hoping, but still 17 is obviously nothing to, uh, nothing to shulk at. Then we've got Fairy Jerry's daughter. <laughs> it's not gonna get old, is it? She's brave. Oh, wow. She also got a virtue. She's comely with nine Marshall as well. Hey, fantastic. She's also doing okay. Then we have Cassowary Jerryson, who is charming. I think the less said about Cassowary Jerry's in the better. Then we have Dysentery Jerry's daughter, who is pensive and comely. Not really expected much for a lot of these kids, I'll be honest with you. And then we've got Mercenary Jerry's son, the fresh child. I think baby is the right term people generally tend to use. Done a great job, I think, of consolidating everything today. Getting a lot of gold, getting a great army under us, taking complete control of Iceland, and getting the dynasty set up ready for... Ready for getting out there. So we'll start by conquesting, I think, obviously, Faroe Island's... Shetland, Orkney go down through the Highlands and we'll see if we can pick things apart. But there is, of course, that time limit on Sicily. So if things are looking a bit a bit close to the wire, I think it was 1020. We'll head down here. We'll grab Sicily before we grab, you know, some of, maybe, maybe before we head up towards the Baltics because we do need things like uh, we do need Orland and, and whatever else happens to kick around Gotland by Sweden. Nordic Norland. Uh... Yalorka seems very confused about that. Nordic Norland? Is it not just always Nordic Norland? So I believe the, the prefix of Nordic is when there is an adventurer that conquests something. 
So that's most likely what happened with Jorvik as well. Someone came and conquested Jorvik, which is why it's Norse Jorvik. Uh, similarly, you'll probably see, you know, like Norse Normandy, or I guess eventually just Normandy. Scandinavian adventurers are set to apocalyptic, so we expect to see many, many of those throughout the campaign. And ultimately, thank you for watching. I hope you're looking forward to uh, seeing what we can pull off with this one. I, I do like the idea of this just because it's a weird playthrough. It, it, it avoids that big thing I personally dislike with Crusader Kings. That's just blobbing when you're at the top. We can't do that. We, we've got a round size limitation. And where are we going to blob out to from Malta, for example, when our capital is up in Iceland? So I think this is going to be a really interesting playthrough. Kind of similar to the an early CK2, CK3 playthrough we did in... Uh, down in Myanmar when we played as, can't remember his name now, the Seaman Dynasty, where we were trying to only take coastal. It's a very similar theme to that, but this time it's a bit more ratified with the achievements. So kind of looking forward to what we end up doing here. And a thank you, of course, goes out to the patrons, without which we would not be here. The channel would not be possible. Uh, well, it would be. It just would fucking, it would suck. It would be terrible to do. And it would be a hobby. You get one video a month and then I'd probably get bored of it and leave. Thank you to, <laughs> thank you to Chicken, Lion666, Kane, Thistlewinds, Kish, Zerik313, Alchemia, Oliver, Sideshow C, Sir Royland, The Incredible Gurren, Scaps, and Dante Mordekane for their support. The executive producer tiers over on Patreon. Big thank you to you guys for making the channel possible in the first place. And a thank you as well to Cass, Coldest Flame, Mystic370, Selkath, Sith, Dunamite. Thanks for the loan, Bojo, Sam Haruni. Anna Aurora, Francesco R, Bucky, Hippie Springveer, Tater Zangus, Salakin J, Lonath, Poised as Fuck, and Rommel DK.